And so, without any further ado, please welcome Vito Torito. All right, just a quick introduction. Um, I'm Italian, so I do apologize for my English in advance. Uh, my name is Vito Torito, as Kevin rightly said. Um, I've just received my Master of Science in International Finance, and uh, I'm talking about asymmetric volatility this evening because this is the topic that I covered in my uh, uh, master dissertation. So um, I didn't put anything too complicated, so I avoided uh, too many complex formulas and so on. So hopefully we can get started. This is what I'm going to cover this evening. Uh, the first part we'll talk about the theory and definitions, about leverage effect, about uh, symmetric volatility and so on. We will see what volatility proxies are and what log returns are and why they are used to calculate volatility. Then we will talking about stochastic volatility, which is basically the main thing. I mean, uh, this is the main uh, topic of my dissertation. And we're talking about, uh, we will see actually some charts that um, uh, on gold, crude oil, FTSE 100, and euro versus dollar. Those are charts that uh, have been uh, calculated by myself using stochastic volatility models. Uh, uh, we will go briefly um, through them later on. And then obviously just a conclusion to summarize what, uh, what we found this evening. What the leverage effect is, is a negative, our negative returns seem to be more important predictors of volatility than positive returns. Large prices declines forecast greater volatility than similarly large prices increase. That's what Robert Engel said, is a Nobel Prize winner, and he won uh, uh, this prize because of his study on uh, volatility. Uh, another definition of this is volatility of stocks tends to increase when the price drops. This is a definition given by Black, who, uh, who is the inventor, uh, who is the professor who created the Black Scholes model. In other words, uh, the leverage effect is just a negative correlation between what? Volatility and returns. When the market drops, volatility tends to rise much more. Said in other ways, negative shocks usually provoke, make the volatility to rise more than what positive shocks do. Okay, we're talking about the magnitude. Okay, we're talking about um, market moves in percentage points. Okay. It's the last one, negative correlation between past returns and future volatility. Can we ask questions? Yeah, sure. Um, is that across all assets, particularly focused on stocks? We will talk about that later on, and yes. Um, does that mean you can make more money in a falling market than a rising market? It depends on which side you are. <laughs> But yes, we will go through this. Yeah, uh, but uh, yes, uh, usually many traders, particularly option traders and futures traders, use this type of volatility in order to trade the market. Uh, mainly, there are some volatility swap now, which are actually traded on Chicago Board of Trades. They're not very popular here in Europe, but uh, in it's very very popular asset in in US. Not at the moment, but it's spreading. Let's say. Now, just a quick question for you. How many types of volatility do you know? Volatility? 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 Any other one? <laughs> okay. Uh, there are many different types of volatility and obviously the measure of them is important in terms of um, uh, trading strategies, okay? There are, uh, it's this actually, uh, they actually stock a volatility, volatility over a specified period, but with the last observation on a date in the past. For instance, volatility calculated since January 2001 until December 2007. Okay, the last observation is in the past. Why is this relevant? Position traders and investors. That's the main volatility fluctuation they have to look at if they want to uh, invest in a stock or derivatives, whatever it is. The next one is actual future, which is um, mainly the projection that you see over the internet. Uh, volatility over a period starting at the current time and ending at a future date, particularly. The future date is the option expiration date. Uh, I don't know if you ever came across the volatility smile. It's mainly uh, a chart which explains how the volatility, oh, matter still, the price action uh, for an option 
since the beginning of the life of that option until the option expiration date. It basically tells you how the volatility fluctuates throughout the entire life of that option. This is very important for options trader. That's what they do all the time, even futures trader now, because the uh, futures trade, uh, futures, uh, futures market uh, became really, really volatile, especially in uh, in the last two or three years. Implied volatility. This is probably uh, uh, something that you're really uh, familiar with. It's the volatility calculated specifically using option prices. Nothing else. You will. Uh, there are, uh, well, purely if there is an academic here in uh, in this hall, probably will say no. That's not true. But believe me, that's the way it works in the real life. That's what they do in investment banks. They calculate implied volatility using mainly the Blaskowitz model, which is not extremely accurate, in my opinion. We will talk about this in a further presentation because otherwise we would be talking uh, for hours about this. But uh, implied volatility. Is, is specifically the volatility index, the VIX. We all know about it. That's the VIX, implied volatility, calculated on standard and poor 500 option prices. Stochastic volatility, the most difficult one, uh, is, is the tendency of volatility to revert to some long run mean value. It's what Kevin was talking, um, um, was talking about. Basically, um, how to express this is when uh, when we talk about volatility, usually in every single market, there's an average value, okay, of the volatility. Usually, it's about 20, 25 percent, okay. It's like it, uh, stochastic volatility works like an oscillator. If we talk about, for instance, the, the relative strength index, we uh, what we look at, we look at over uh, oversold and overbought, okay. When the price is oversold, what, what we're gonna do? Are we going, uh, uh, would you go short or would you go long? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. It's exactly the same thing with volatility. When the volatility is too high, usually option traders tend to push it down. That's what they do. That's why it reverts to long run mean value. That's why it's very important to know what the value is. Okay, it fluctuates on a long run value. That's an average. It goes up and down, but at the end of the day, in the long run, it's always the same. It fluctuates within certain boundaries. It's uh, up to a certain extent. It's very close to um, uh, Bollinger Bands. More complicated than that because this formula is extremely complicated. But uh, you're right. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, the, I mean, the, um, the rationale behind the formula is almost the same. Uh, these models are the most popular one, uh, especially in the academic environment. Gauge model, um, Gauge models, uh, Chen model, Hessel model, uh, the last two are extremely complicated. I'm not going to go through that now. We will talk uh, about this maybe later on in a further presentation. Okay, proxy for volatility. Now, this is a kind of uh, new information for you. True volatility, believe it or not, cannot be observed. It's not possible to, to see uh, what the real volatility for a stock, for a derivative, for a particular asset is, because it's very difficult to separate systematic variables from idiosyncratic variables. <laughs> you look really crossed. <laughs> In other words, it's very easy. Uh, Market-wide factors. Okay, it's very difficult to see if the uh, if, if, if sorry, it's very difficult to say if the market uh, or the volatility is rising because econo econo macroeconomic variables or because it's a specific news about a particular stock that you're trading. Um, I don't know uh, if you're trading. I don't know uh, Google's, for instance, um, uh, at the moment. I don't know if you read a newspaper about China, what happened, okay? So you can't really say if the entire macroeconomic environment which is pushing up or down Google's shares was because that particular situation which is provoking that uh, particular movement in the market. That's why it's very difficult to say that. That's why we need a proxy. What is a proxy? Is a surrogate, something that can tell me how the volatility is performing roughly. Okay, obviously not, uh, we cannot be 100% sure. We usually uh, utilize log norm, yes, sorry. Um, if you go back to slide for a second, mm. so for accuracy, 
academics, that's a worry, right? So whether it's market-wide frustrations or whether it's, it's ASOK, for a trader, we don't care, right? Obviously. Obviously, that's obviously something that uh, that's up to the uh, to the trader. And actually, I was reading recently.